Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the humongous. Where does depression come from? It comes from feeling that no one needs you. It comes from having no useful purpose when you wake up in the morning. No useful purpose for the next hour, the next day, or the next week. And it comes from having no sense of meaning. No sense of a higher goal to the things that you do. All these are real world things, things outside of you. They're challenges that all of us have to take on and overcome. But depression also comes from something else. It comes from your brain. It comes from your biology. And sometimes when people really do need you, when you really do have something important to do in your day, and when you really do have, wait, we're losing track. I wrote this <laughs> whole thing out for you because I can get more information out to you that way. Um, and when you really on the, are on the track of a higher purpose, you can't feel it sometimes. You still wake up feeling of no value to your friends and family. You sometimes wake up feeling as if you have no friends and family. You still wake up even though you have valuable things to do and even though people need and want you. You still wake up feeling as if your tasks are meaningless. You still wake up feeling as if your actions have no higher goal. What can you do? I had a friend in England. She Facebooked me four months ago. She was depressed. She was so depressed that I was afraid that I would lose her within two to three days to suicide. I racked my brain to think of something I could do to help. I was almost sure I didn't know a thing. And then something occurred to me about something I had used in order to escape 15 years in a bed with chronic fatigue syndrome, which we'll talk more about in a second. I recommended it to her. It's called GABA Pentin. She was able to get a prescription from her doctor at Britain's National Health Service. A few days later, I got an email. It said, it was a Facebook actually. It said, I don't know if it's just in my brain, but I think I'm getting better. A few days after that, she said, no, it's not in my head. I seem to be getting better. A month later, she Facebooked and said, I went out to my garden today. And for the first time in years, I enjoyed it. And I had energy. And months and months later, she said in a Facebook message, it's still working. Let me tell you another Gabba Penton story. For 15 years, I was stuck in a bed with a bizarre illness, the one I just mentioned, chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a hell of a lot worse than it sounds. My body was tortured by super stress. But more about super stress in a minute. Three things worked for me. Valium, which helped enormously, but is addictive, and I later stopped using. Oxytocin, the bonding hormone, the hormone of trust, which I now use daily. And gabapentin. When you trace the action of these three things, if you trace them in the drug in the scientific literature, something strange turns up. They all work by turning up something called GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, GABA. Something called GABA in a GABA versus glutamate system. 
and the ultimate drug that along with a cocktail of 30 medications got me out of bed and doing over 300 push-ups without stopping a day and on a really good day over 600 push-ups without stopping was GABA pen. Now what in the world is GABA pen? GABA pen turns up the GABA in the GABA versus glutamate system. And the ultimate drug, whoops, and what is GABA? The GABA and glutamate system. And why is it important that you know about it? GABA and glutamate are opposites joined at the hip. They're like the flexors on the top of your bicep. The flexors work with the extensors on the bottom of your bicep to move your arm. The flexors work with the extensors by working against them. The flexors and extensors work by harnessing the power of paradox. But the power of paradox is a subject for another time. GABA is an inhibitor. It quiets things down. It stops things. And glutamate, its opposite, is a stimulant. Glutamate rouses things. Now, arousal sounds good, right? You'd think an inhibitor would remove you from the outside world, and a stimulant would engage you with what's outside of you. But no, that's not how it works. In fact, it's precisely the opposite. And Ha, we've lost our space in this piece of paper. Hang on, bear with me. I hate paper. <laughs> Digital electrons are so much better. Okay, but that's, oh, let's do this again. GABA is an inhibitor. It quiets things down. Glutamate is a stimulant. It rouses things. Arousal sounds good, right? You'd think an inhibitor would remove you from the outside world, and a stimulant would engage you with what's outside of you. But no, that's not how it works. As you'll see in a few minutes, back to gabapentin, the drug that stopped my friend's depression. Gabapentin turns up the inhibitor. It stops the stimulant from hijacking your nervous system. And what, pray tell, does that achieve? Minor miracles. A 2004 survey published by the New York Academy of Sciences showed that the GABA versus glutamate system is crucial to stress handling. Now we have to find our place again. Um, a network of GABA versus glutamate centers in strange parts of your brain, like your Par parvocellular, paraventricular nucleus, control your HPA, your hypothalamic pituitary axis, a mesh that hotwires your brain to the adrenal cortices just above your kidneys and that connects these things to your sexual organs. Your HPA produces your steroids, your stress hormones. Your HPA is like the firehouse of your nervous system. It's your central alarm and emergency response crew. There's only one problem. If your emergency responders are out handling crises 24-7, you're in really big trouble. Your emergency responders open your stores of energy, your stores of the fuel on which your body operates. They open them like a fire hose. That fuel is a sugar, glucose, and your emergency crew can apparently deplete your fuel stores. It can also wear itself out, leaving you without energy. 
In my case, I was so without energy that I was too weak to talk, too weak to walk, and sometimes too weak to pick up my hands and use a computer keyboard laid across my lap. The only thing I was strong enough to do was react with stress, extreme, vicious stress. When my wife lay in the bed next to me and turned the page of a newspaper, the sound went through me like a cannonball. It felt as if the crunching noise was tearing me apart. We soon learned that I couldn't have another person with me in the room. And I couldn't read or watch TV unless there was nothing stressful on it. But there's a trick. Nearly everything that entertains you and me is designed to evoke stress. Stress is a key part of any plot that grabs you. Plot structure, says Aristotle, has five elements. Introduction of the characters, introduction of the problem, in other words, the introduction of something stressful, development of the problem, which means more stress, then crisis, high stress. Finally, according to Aristotle, come the fifth element, resolution, denouement, knotting up of all the threads, sometimes known as catachresis. Even comedy, it turns out, has this five-part stress-based structure. I tried to escape this by finding the most boring things ever written in the English language, and the most boring author I've ever seen in English literature is James Thurber. The most safest possible thing that James Thurber ever wrote was about warm and fuzzy creatures who adore us, dogs, an entire book of dog stories. I made it up to page 96 without a problem. Then on a third of a page, two short paragraphs, Thurber had a fight between two dogs. That set me back forths. I was already in very bad shape for three months. I was in even worse shape. That's what can happen with a really boring dog story when your stress handling system is in permanent alarm mode. But stress is just a small part of the GABA versus glutamate story. Yes, GABA suppresses stress. Two remarkable studies on GABA and glutamate appeared in just the last few weeks. February 18th, 2014, in the Queen of the Science Journals, Science, and the other came out September 11th, 2014, in another high-prestige journal, Cell. Here's what these two studies showed. You need GABA in your amygdala, to turn, that's a part of your brain, to turn you from an introvert to an extrovert. You need GABA in your amygdala to turn you from your internal mode to your external mode. What is your internal mode? If we can find it. You're so preoccupied with what's going on inside of you when you're in your internal mode that it feels like the outside world ceases to exist. With too little GABA, you turn internal. You become a persnickety self-preener. You disengage from the outside world and you pick at yourself. You become obsessively introverted. That's with too little GABA. Then there's the external mode, where you engage with other people. You're social, and you engage with your activities, and the inside world seems to melt away. My favorite external mode activity is getting on a motorcycle and driving at 95 miles an hour down a dangerous highway. Everything inside of you melts away. To get to the sunny sailing of the external mode, you need GABA. You need your inhibitor. You'd think a stimulant would engage you with others, and an inhibitor would drown you in your interior reality. But that's not the way it works. It's just the opposite. To get outside yourself, you need 
your inhibitor. You need your inhibitor overcoming your stimulator. You need your GABA beating back your glutamate. Then there's the balance of GABA and glutamate in a part of the brain called the habenula, a region above the thalamus. This balance impacts your disappointment, your pain, and your depression, your sense that the glass is half empty or half full. Too little GABA, and you have a sense of deprivation, a sense that the glass is half empty. Too little GABA, and you have a sense of depression. Too little GABA, and you even have pain. Get your balance of GABA and glutamate straightened out, and you can dial down your sense of deprivation, your pain, and most of all, your depression. Get your GABA to successfully beat back your glutamate, and you just may have a crack at experiencing joy and energy. It's even possible that antidepressants like Prozac, antidepressants known as SSRIs, serotonin boosters, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, work because, surprise, they increase the level of GABA. Increasing GABA levels is exactly what SSRI antidepressants have been shown to do in studies on depressed rats. The downside is that in some people gabapentin does nasty things. It can actually increase depression and generate suicidal thoughts in a very small number of those who take it. So realize that we're all physically different and our bodies react very differently to medication. What works for me and what works for my friend in England may not work for you. But when you are thinking through your depression pains, when you're trying to think out a way, a way out of your interior tortures, when you are tired of the monsters and the hells that we all have deep inside of us, keep the GABA versus glutamate system in mind. It just may change the way you operate your brain. And now, a word from our sponsor. My book, The Mohammed Code, has just come out on paper on Amazon.com. To understand ISIS beheadings, Boko Haram's sex slaves, Hamas 4,000 rocket attacks, and the danger to you and me of Iran's nuclear program, this is a book you absolutely have to read. The Mohammed Code tells the story of how Mohammed himself invented jihad how he conquered 317 square miles of territory a day, how he led 65 military campaigns, how he personally led 27 of them, how he invented what we call militant Islam and jihadism. The Muhammad Code, whoops, the Muhammad Code tells a story you're really not supposed to know says David Swindell, lifestyle editor of PJ Media. The Muhammad Code is keeping me up at night. It's a terrifying book, like a horror novel. It's the best book I've read on Islam. That's it. <laughs> this is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make and it's your job and my job to understand or want to know why. Ask how. And now for that slimy, sleazy, infinitely sneaky little off button. Is it here? Ah, I think. <laughs> I think I've 